Hey, what's going on everyone? Hawks21 here, back with episode 6 of my Splinterlands Beginner's Guide series. So I've gotten a bunch of questions about sort of deck building strategies or you know how I would initially go into the game. And I've been thinking about how I best want to structure that and I've decided to do two videos. Episode 6, which is this one, which is going to be a three st step strategy I would use to go from bronze to silver. There's no specific timeline in between these steps. This is just how I would structure uh, sort of my approach. And you know, the speed at which you do this is going to depend on how much money you have to put into the game, you know, how frequently you're playing, um, a bunch of things. So like, you know, for some people, you might get through step one through three in, you know, a couple weeks. Some people it might take a year, a couple months. It really depends on a lot of factors. But this is sort of the timeline I would follow. And then episode seven is going to be a specific guide on how I would spend my first $100. But that'll be for the next episode, so let's get into this one. Step one of what I would do in Splinterlands if I was just starting today is find cards that would help me win at bronze that I don't get in the starter deck. So that's going to be a couple things. That's going to be epics and legendaries, as well as some old rewards cards. I'm going to focus in modern, right? Because modern's just going to give new players the best chance to compete at higher levels earlier. Uh, they're going to lower the collection power barrier um, to get into silver and all the other leagues as well. In, once we switch to the modern league. So that's where we're going to focus. We're not going to focus on the more expensive old cards. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to peak monsters. I'm going to hit... Uh, I'm going to come to the buy tab. And the other thing is we're going to focus across all splinters in this step one process. And that is because you're, you're presumably just learning to play the game if you're just starting, right? So the important thing is you're trying out all the different splinters. You're trying out all the different cards. And you're sort of feeling out strategies you like doing, what you've had success with. And knowing that is going to be important in the later steps as you sort of define what your deck is going to look like. But right off the bat, you want to buy cards across, or what I would do is buy cards across all splinters. Because if I just started, I don't know what's going to be successful, right? Like, I'm only going to know that through playing the game. So you don't want to limit yourself early on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to filter by Untamed, Chaos Legion, and Dice. So we're not going to do rewards yet, because right now the starter pack, or the starter deck, um is untamed in chaos cards. Um, so what's important, you're actually gonna unclick dice too for that same reason. These are your starter cards, right? Every card that's um, common and rare, you have a level one of, which is all you need for this first step of bronze. You don't need to worry about that yet. So we're gonna focus on adding some epic and legendary cards to your deck that can make a difference and you know if you come against someone who's just playing the um starter deck you're gonna have an advantage over them because you have some of these cards so this is going to help you win games earlier on which is important for a couple reasons one you do get earnings and bronze for winning games they're not that they're not that substantial but you do get them and it's going to help you sort of enjoy the game more like if you're going to jump in there and keep losing all of your matches, you're probably going to quit pretty early on. I wouldn't keep playing something that, you know, I kept losing over and over and over and over again. So this is going to be a way for you to build up your deck. I'm going to go through now and pick some of the specific cards I would think about adding. And I will say, I don't know what your initial budget is. So, you know, you're probably not going to be able to get all of these cards. But I'm just going to point out some of the ones I would pay attention to and ones I wouldn't. Um, and hopefully that can help you sort of decide which ones are right for you or you might find some synergies early on and I might miss a card that you might be interested in that I'm not. So this is just very basic guidelines of what I would think about right now. And again, I don't know how much money you're spending. So if you have $10, you know, you're not going to be able to buy every card that I list right now. If you have $50, you might be able to buy a lot of them. I just don't know. And again, what I said about the timeline is... You know, maybe you're putting in $10 a month, $10 a week, $100 a month. I just don't know. So the speed at which you accomplish this is going to vary based on the investment you're able to put into the game and whatever works for you personally. So let's get started. 
The first card I see here that I would add is the Hunter Jarks. I don't use him at higher levels, but in bronze at this base level, the three archery with the snipe is really powerful, especially only for six mana, has decent health. Um, you can use the Eastwood, which is the minus two shield summoner. So you can take away any of your opponent's shield who might be on the snipe spot. It's low speed, but with the high damage and the snipe, snipe monsters are pretty good at bronze. I would consider the Hunter Jacks. I would do the Jin Inferni, uh, mainly for the magic. You're not going to come across a ton of giants. He has Giant Killer in bronze. It is expensive with the seven mana, but magic is just so powerful. Um, I would consider the Jin Inferni, especially for a dollar. The Nerissa Tridon. I don't have this card leveled up at for gold or anything because she doesn't pick up any abilities. She gets more magic, but she's a great card to add. Again, high mana for a dollar. You just got to pick up one of her. Magi of Chaos I'm picking up. Neutral, you can play him with every single splinter. And he uh, synergizes really well with Obsidian. So Obsidian right off the bat is going to give him three magic, which again, we know magic is really powerful in bronze. Wave Brood is a must add. This is my first must, must, must add. I made a separate video about the backline tank strategies. So if you haven't watched that, I would go check it out. But now that we've added a triage monster at bronze, um, which we will get to in a second, um, you know, having this card can really separate your bronze deck from your opponents. Must add. I would definitely pick up the Tusk the Wide. Magic spamming is real at bronze uh, and silver. So getting a card with 12 HP and um, void is, you know, really important for only six mana too. He's not going to do much of an attack for you and he's really slow. Although using a Matarsa would boost uh, this up to two. Comes a little more viable. In reverse speed matches, you know, all of a sudden the speed is a good thing. So he has some other uses, but mainly for me, he's just a magic shield. And I mean, he doesn't have a ton of... Or mad, sorry, Fire doesn't have a ton of magic defense. That's one of their problems. And he's their main version of that. So I would consider Tusk the Wide for sure. Prismologist, I would probably pick up. Synergize as well with General Sloan. Has the Blast, some Shield. Is slow, and 8 mana is expensive. But I would probably pick up a Prismologist. Forgotten One is tricky. I would pick up Forgotten One. He gets really good at higher levels. But mainly I'd pick up a Forgotten One for the Poison. So, in poison matches at bronze, it's nice to stick him in the back or in the middle because you know as the match goes on, he's not going to take any poison damage, right? So, as he slowly moves to the front, all of a sudden his op your opponent has lost a bunch of their damage dealers and he slides into the front position with full health, full shield, ready to go. Magi Necrosia I'm picking up. The camouflage is huge for a magic snipe monster. You can stick him into the back and he can fire the entire game without being targeted at the snipe position. I would say he's a close to a must-add. Grund is a must-add. Specifically because you get that backline tank for free in the starter pack at bronze. The Mycelic split, Slip Spawn for green. And he can really, uh, that card can really unlock some of Grund's potential. So picking up a Grund, I would say, is another must-add. Uh, nothing here. Like, these two recharge monsters don't excite me. The Harpoonist would be a nice-to-have. We're getting kind of expensive, so some of these are going to become nice-to-haves. I would clarify that. Everything until this point, I've either called a must-add or I would-add. The must-adds, I think you should 100% need to add. I would-add. I would strongly consider adding. And then these are sort of nice-to-haves. I don't think you need them. And again, we're getting more and more expensive, so I don't know your price. But this card would be a nice to have. The three archery with the six mana. It's going to pick up a shield from Kelia and a speed. So all of a sudden it becomes pretty fast. Can deal with some flying monsters because of the snare. This would be a nice to have. Uh, this card at higher levels is nice, but not here. I would pick up a Thunderbird. Um, yeah, I would pick up a Thunderbird. With the General Sloan giving this two um, with for a three mana cost with the flying. It's pretty powerful. I would pick up all of the Corpse Fiends. Or not the Corpse Fiends, all of the Fiends. Uh, they all have different names. Um, just having that zero mana cost monster that you can throw in there to take a hit uh, is really important. 
Nothing else here, I think, is a thing you need to worry about. Again, all of the fiends. Nope. Lyra is interesting. I would call her a nice to have. Not necessary, but yeah, she's fast. She has the hit point. She has the archery. She would be a nice to have. Um, not necessary by any means. Gorgolodon would be a nice to add. Nice to have. Just a big damage dealer at bronze. Very slow and doesn't have the true strike, so we'll probably miss a little bit. Adelia Brightwing. Uh, I'm going to say I would, I would pick up a Brightwing. You could run some nice shield bearer repair strategies at bronze when you're not expecting magic. That would work really, really well. Uh, and in Earthquake Battle, she's going to stay alive and can repair the shield bearer a bunch. So I'm going to say yes on the Brightwing. Again, getting more expensive. I'm going to say no on Uriel. Until it gets to heal, I just, you know, you could destroy this thing with magic pretty quickly until it has to heal. So I'm going to say no here. Mitika Headhunter, I'm going to say I would pick up. Just because you can do a decent sort of archery strategy with Eastwood. Um, with the Hunter Jarks we talked about earlier. Then the Mitika, really fast um, with the four archery. I would pick up a Mitika. Stay away from Chaos Dragon until it gets the blast. You're just not going to be able to play it that often in bronze. And I'm out on Scattershot unless Blast is involved, which higher levels, this is great. Coral Wraith, nice to have, but I don't think necessary. Grum is borderline must-add. The Bloodlust at bronze is really, really great. Um, yeah, this is very close to must. Again, we're getting expensive, but... Grum is very, very powerful and will really help you win matches at bronze. Spirit Hoarder, same thing. Borderline must add. The triage with the backline taunt strategies that I've talked about at bronze works really, really, really well. So Spirit Hoarder and Grum are must adds. Um, again, depends on your budget. This is where the time frame. If you have $100, you can pick these up right away. But this might be something you need to work towards. Or if you're putting in $5 a month, you know, it might take a couple months for you to get the capital to pick one of these up. Bakjira, another one. Really good magic defense. And the slow with the high hit points for six. Borderline must add. Borderline. I would I would probably pick one up just because I love it so much. Um, even before the heal. But again, we're getting expensive here. Oh, let me click out of the golds, actually. I only want regular. Let's get back to the Bakjira. Queen Mycelia is a nice to have. The Protect is really nice, and it gets a boost from Obsidian. But I don't think it's necessary. It would be nice to have. And then, okay, anything past the Queen Mycelia for now. Again, these prices could obviously change at any moment. But anything past the Queen Mycelia, I would say you're better off saving your money for step two. Because, again, the main goal is to move up to silver and you're spending a lot of money here for the same amount of collection power not as the as some of the lower level ones right um you know if you were to buy like an epic that was all the way up here or a legendary that's all the way up here like if you were to buy dr blight for example for 92 dollars he has the same collection power as uh let me just find any as uriel the purifier right for 10x less i would say dr blight's a better card um, but it's just from a collection power, power standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Any of these cards, anything after the queen mycelia right here, I would say you ignore, um, until you get to, you know, cause you need to get to silver first and you need to save your capital for step two. So after you've oh, actually, wait, we're not done yet. Now I got to look at dice and reward. Cause there are some guys in here. And now you don't get these cards in the starter deck. So you got to include all rarities. We'll go through quickly. I wouldn't buy any of these lower price rewards cards. You're going to eventually get them in chests and stuff. So I would save your money even though they're so cheap. Yeah, rare and commons. You're going to buy. I'm going to have you buy some epics. But rare and commons I'm ignoring. Charlock Minotaur I would pick up. It goes really well with Tarsa. It has a true strike. It's slow. Good HP. I mean, and it's, we're talking 11 cents. I would pick that up. 
Again, these are the reward cards you can actively get. So Bernard Crystal Smith is great and synergizes really well with General Sloan, but I would wait to get lucky and get one versus spending capital on it. Again, that also depends how much money you have because 13 cents, it might be great just to lock it down and have it. This would be the one I would say, this one and the Heat Smith or Wave Smith, sorry. I would say if you're gonna buy some rare cards, uh, rare reward cards that they're actively giving out, those would be the two. Um, and these, so the reason why I did this last is because some older ones are mixed in here, like this card background, you can't play in modern. So I would ignore this one. Nectar Queen, I would pick one up. It's flying really good and slow, powerful. Yeah, this is, I would 100% pick that one of these up. Warrior of Peace is kind of a nice to have. High hit points, high speed, demoralize. Demented Shark, 100% must add. You can do some really nice melee strategies with water that include the Demented Shark with the uh, Amplify at level one, which Amplify gives, um, not Amplify, Jesus, uh, Inspire gives an extra melee attack to everyone. Um, Nightmare, I love at the higher levels, but in bronze, like he's my most underrated higher level card, but at the bronze level, I... He's just not that good. Again, Creeping Ooze is an old card. This would have been a must add, but old card, don't worry about it. I'm going to buy a Jin Renova. I know it's a reward card, but we're now talking epic, so it's harder and harder to get one. And if you do get one of these epic cards, you can always just resell it um, and, you know, reuse that money. Same with Lava Launcher. I'm going to pick up a Lava Launcher. I'm going to pick up a Uraeus. It's a neutral sneak card. So again, you can do a nice little magic play with the um, Demented Shark, with the Inspire, the Pelicor Bandit, and then Uraeus. Let's see. Uh, Jin Chihuahua, same thing. Must add. Efreet Elder, I'm calling a must add. Getting this last stand in bronze is really, really, really great. Um, you know, once this goes into last stand, you're talking two magic, five speed and 12 health. That is a great ending card in bronze. Um, and it only caught, he gets last stand at level one. Sandworm must add just huge sneak damage. Um, oh, it doesn't show the attack here. He gets five attack, uh, reverse speed master, um, before you level him up. Probably not a lot more. Silver, this is this would be a nice to have. Which synergizes really well with the archery with General Sloan, Snipe. This would be a nice to have. I would probably pick one up. Help Initiate would probably pick one up. Centauri Mage would probably pick one up. Just because magic damage synergizes really well with Obsidian. Has high hit points with 9. And the Return Fire is nice too. It's a good one to put into the Snipe position. Um... So if you get sniped with archery, she'll send it right back. Harklaw I'm picking up. Jin Bilka is a borderline must add with the camouflage. Um, with Obsidian, it's going to get the two magic for three mana and no one can hit it. Phineas Rage, I'm going to pick one up. It just synergizes so well. Borderline must add with Tarsa. It's going to give it the three attack. It's really fast and it has the reach. So it's going to it can hit from melee from the second position. We're probably running out. Uh, this is a nice to have, but I don't think necessary. Jin O'Shaughness is a must add. And I'm going to give one of these away. I keep saying it. The reason why I keep delaying the giveaway um, is because I'm about to go on vacation. And it's something that I want to do like very succinct and on a very straightforward timeline. And I've sort of pre-recorded a bunch of videos I'm going to put out because my timing is going to be sporadic uh, starting next week. So... I'm waiting to do the Jin O'Shaughness giveaway because I don't want to put one out and then not be able to follow through for six days. Then it looks all sketchy. So I'm waiting until I get back from vacation in a week, but I am doing a Jin O'Shaughness giveaway confirmed. This is a must add, or you can wait to see if you win the giveaway, I guess. Um, Torheel of the Frozen is a nice to have just because it counters the uh, magic spamming. It's expensive. Axe Master, I would say is a must add. It's going to be the most expensive must add but it is certainly a must add the double strike with the two archery can really transform your bronze deck from the back 
He's going to be doing four damage every turn. I assume that's it. Because now we're getting into the air again. The Almo Cambio and the Robo Dragon Knight are really, really great cards. And depending on how much money you have, I would say yes. But they're borderline to the point where you should save your money for step two. Um, but I would consider these. He gets Almo Cambio gets better at the higher levels. He's a carry card at Bronze, so I'd be more likely to pick up him than Almo Cambio. Um, but both of these are borderline, and that's probably going to be it. Yeah, anything beyond that, save your money for step two, which is what we are now about to get into, which is leveling up some summoners to get to silver. So what I'm going to do here is, so these are the summoners that you are given in the starter deck. Untamed. You're giving rare, untamed, and Chaos Legion summoners. So here they are. You're going to play with the cards that you purchased in step one. And you're going to try out all of these summoners with all of the cards that you have and you purchased. And you're going to find some favorites. And from there, you have a decision to make. So you're ready to start leveling up summoners. Let's say, for example, you decide, you've used Obsidian and Kelia a ton and they're your favorite summoners and you use them all the time in bronze but they're some of the more expensive ones so maybe you don't have the money to buy 25 of them which is what i would have you do i want you to buy 25 so you can max this out for silver um, and again this step is going to take some time depending on how much money you have to put in the game because this is not cheap right if you're buying 25 of you know it's just under a hundred dollars here just over a hundred dollars here but the decision you have to make is let's say these two are your favorites but you also did okay with general sloan and thaddeus brood who i really like thaddeus brood maybe instead you say you know what obsidian and kelly are for another day i'm gonna focus on the two cheapest chaos legion summoners and i'm gonna get 25 uh sloans for you know what is this probably like 60 dollars and then 25 Thaddeus is for 70 something dollars. And again, you're going to do this over time, right? You're probably not going to come in if you're following this strategy and buy all of them at once. But as you sort of get, get more and more rewards and, you know, maybe you put your monthly $10 into the game, slowly over time, you accumulate these summoners to level five. Um, because that's the level you're going to, I'm sorry, level four. Apologies. Level four is the silver for rare. Because... That leads us into step three, which is now you've sort of picked the splinters you're going towards, right? Because you've picked these summoners. Maybe you do wait longer and get the obsidian, but let's say you do Sloan and Thaddeus Brood. Your next step is to go through the starter deck cards. I would say start with Chaos Legion. And like, let's say hypothetically you bought, um, you did General Sloan. So you did the archery. I'm coming into the life and I'm just looking at these cards. Like which one of these have I used and is useful to me and gets like a lot better as you level them up. So nothing here really sticks out to me. So I mean commons, if you have a level five or level four general Sloan, sorry, I keep saying five, but it is four. You might be like, okay, I want to get this to the three attack. I use this card a lot. Maybe you slowly start buying Stitch Leeches. Come in here and you say, oh, the Pelicor Arbalist is great. You can play this one at level four. But you're like, oh, he doesn't get another attack until level seven. So maybe I don't need to level this one up and I could keep using the starter version. Time Mage. Maybe you're like, I use a Time Mage for the slow all the time. I want to get 14 of these so it picks up a second magic attack. This is why you have to do the summoners first, because then you can start playing leveled up monsters, which is ultimately what you're going to need to do if you want to win games. Prismologist, say you love the Prismologist with the blast. You can play level uh, three with a level four rare summoner. Maybe you pick up 10 of these. You have the, it's $18. 
It was going to have five archery with Sloan. The blast damage is going to be for three. Really powerful card. So you're going to do this. You're going to do this process, basically going card by card for the two to maybe three splinters you picked. And you're going to try to create fully built out silver level decks in those splinters. And so you're going to be in a situation where you're working your way up through silver. And if you don't get those two splinters that you've built out, you're probably going to be at a disadvantage. But one, you have the other cards, the epic and legendaries that you originally purchased. So those will give you a fighting chance. And maybe the other person you're playing doesn't have one of the splinters built out as well. And then the other thing is, what you've done is buy some of the best cards in the game and one copy of them, which are so liquid, so that if you get to the point where you're like, oh, I never play Earth, ever. Some of those cards you bought in step one, let's say some of them have appreciated or you know they're sitting around the same value and you never use them, that's a perfect time to sell them, right? Like. You don't need to have a well-built out thing for every single splinter. Some of the cards are nice to have, but you can now go through and what you did in step one, sell off the cards you never use and use that money from the proceeds of selling those cards to really build up these two to three splinters. And that's ultimately how I did things when I was first starting. I, you know, I put in a decent amount of capital, so it was pretty quick for me. Um, I started with a couple hundred dollars um, and I built out, I actually forget, I built out a earth deck with East, with the summoner Eastwood, the minus two shield summoner. And then I built out, I actually forget the second deck. I built out a dragon deck. A dragon deck is interesting to build out because that will let you play cards from other, leveled up cards from other splinters. So that's something to consider too. If you want to get a dragon summoner, um, that's where you could go from there. But basically I built out uh, two to three silver level squads and started, you know, seeing my earnings increase, increase, increase until I got to the point where with a little more outside investment, I could fully, you know, I, all of a sudden I started adding another splinter. So I think I added a water splinter after that. Um, then I started working on my life splinter and all of a sudden I had every single splinter except for death. I never really touched death leveled up to silver with a bunch of cards in each one that could help me win games and i was winning a bunch of games in silver you know and the rewards i'd been rewarded to the point where i was like okay i understand this game i get how the economy works it's time for me to go all in and that's where i took it so i you know with the drop of chaos legion i went from pretty mediocre to good silver deck to now I have every single splinter in a really good spot um, for gold. I have a, I'm still working on maxing out some cards, but I have a lot of cards maxed out for gold. The cards that I use personally, which is what this is about, right? You're going to have a different strategy than me as you move through silver, and that's fine. I'm going to show you different strategies that work for me, but you might have specific stuff that works for you. And that's what's really important. So to wrap this up, I'm going to recap. Step one is finding the cards that help you win at brats. The epics and the legendaries that you don't get in the starter deck that, you know, when you're running into an opponent who doesn't have those cards, you'll be at an advantage. Step two, once you get those cards and you're winning games at bronze, is start leveling up two to three summoners. And those are gonna be the splinters that you pick for step three, which is getting those splinters really good in silver to the point where you're winning 60 to 70% of the matches that you put that splinter out in. And that's sort of like the phase one of my Splinterlands journey. It's what I did and it's what I would do right now. Um, stay tuned for episode seven, which is where I'm specifically gonna give myself a budget of 100 US dollars. And I'm gonna do this exercise for you. So I'm gonna go through and specifically spend, I'm, I might not actually spend the $100, but I'm gonna put $100 into my cart and show you what I would hit buy on to do step one of you know the steps i just outlined so i really appreciate you being here for episode six it was probably my longest one i'm definitely feeling a little winded at the end of this um, but if you learned anything or if you uh, liked the content i would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe and help the channel grow 
Um, thanks for being here. I'll talk to you soon.